So in our last video, we took a look at installing O3DE. This is really the third-party tool. So this is part one of the series of videos. So now we're in part two. And what we're essentially going to do is go to the setting up O3D from GitHub. Now you can find this if you go to the default page, o3de.org, and you click on Get Started. And off to the side here, you'll find Setup, and then Set Up O3D from GitHub. Now we're just going to um, I'm not going to get into the specifics um, because if you go through this video up here, there's very uh, high level details on how to do all this workflow. What we're looking at is creating a um, version on our computer that isn't going to be used to access the fork or anything like that. So we're just doing a sort of a rapid version, a uh, quick way of, of getting this up and running. So go to your C drive. And um, by typing in CMD, let's go ahead and open a command prompt in here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And really, all I'm going to do is I'm going to run through and copy and paste commands. So the first thing we have to do is install a large file system um, by running this command. And it says git lfs initialize. Now, again, if you haven't run through this video, which installs git and CMake and all that stuff, please do that beforehand. I'll link this. Um, in the description of this video. All right, um, we're actually going to skip over forking and cloning and all that stuff, and we're going to just go down to where um, we actually clone, but we, we're not forking a version. So the way you do that is you could say, see, it says create a fork of the O3D GitHub repo. I'm going to copy git clone from here, paste that in here, space that out a little bit, and then I'm going to grab this link. Now, what we're doing here is we're actually pulling down. Um, a copy that we will not be, again, we won't be forking, we won't be submitting anything to this, but there is a video coming out where you'll be able to submit pull requests and um, code contribution stuff. I'm going to go into all that. But for now, uh, what we're really doing is we're just pulling down these files to our computer. So I'm going to go ahead and um, leave my C prompt open over here, and I'm just going to press enter. What you'll see is an O3D folder will start to appear and all of the files will start to populate. Depending on how fast, I have gigabit internet at home, so depending on how fast your internet is, this can go really fast or really slow. So I'm going to head and pause this video until it's done. So you can see here, we um, it gave us the cloning message, it processed all the data, all this good stuff. And you can see now in the O3D folder, we have all of these files. So as long as it goes uninterrupted, you'll be okay. Let's jump back to our O3DE page here. And again, I'm going to bypass all of this because we're not going to set up a credential manager. Now, it wants us to change directories into our O3DE and then run this so that we can make sure that we are up to date. So I'm already um, I'm going to just kind of switch over to that folder, which is here, and then run open a command line window inside of here and run that command. And if nothing negative comes up, you should be OK. Um, if it's your first time pulling, it'll take a little bit, and then it'll, it should process through, just like that. Now let's go back to the page here. Uh, we're going to bypass all of this upstream cloning. Um, and we're just going to go all the way down to just double checking that we have all of our files by doing a pull. And it'll let us know. Um, whether or not we're already up to date if we have all of the files. So this is a great way of checking. Now the next thing it wants us to do is make a directory with um, this name by running this command on our C drive. Now you could just copy this and then go to your C drive and make a new folder and paste that. Or I'm going to open a command line here. And then just so that we're sort of uh, like staying within the same vein, I'm going to just run that command, just so that we're, we're again following along with these here. So I'm going to copy all of this and paste that in there and run that. So inside of O3DE here, um, you'll find a, a Python folder. And here's this get Python file uh, here. It's looking for this shell script. So if I run this command, and I think the trick is I'm going to hit tab. Let's let's try this. You want to just grab this git python.bat. You could also double click it to be honest with you, but let's hit let's paste it, see if 
There we go. Yeah, and I'm running it within that Python folder. And it's going to start installing all of these uh, scripts and such. So if we go back here to O3DE, uh, you'll still see that um, it's going to start installing all of the runtimes that we need. And you can see that here. So let's go ahead and pause it, let that run through. Now we've received our, the following messages, and this is going to let us know that it's been installed successfully. Um, now back here, the next thing is we're going to be running this command. And this is important that we remember where we put our O3D packages. So let's kind of paste this in there, and I'll, I'll briefly review what this command does. So here, there we go. So I'm going to paste this in here. And what we're essentially doing is this is the folder in which it's going to build our engine. So it's going to create a folder called build if we don't have one inside of O3DE. And actually, let's let's do this a little cleaner. Let's go into our O3DE folder here and open our command line. And let's paste that in there. Now, this Unity builds on helps um, build a little bit quicker, this thing. We're going to create a folder inside of here called build. And within that folder, it's going to create another folder called uh, Windows 2019. Let me close this up. Windows uh, VS 2019. This is our generator, the generator that we want to use, which is Visual Studio. This is what's pointing to this third party packages folder. So after I run this inside of this O3D packages folder, you're going to start seeing um, the files start to populate. So I'm actually going to just click in here and hit enter twice. And then you can see it's starting to build it out. And um, actually, let's jump back in here really quick so you can see that this building folder was created with the Windows Visual Studio 2019. That's a good sign. Let's go back to C and look in our O3D packages folder. And you can see files are starting to populate, our third party files that we need are starting to populate in here. So this is all a really good sign. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again and just let that run through. So you can see here that we have um, configuring done, generating done, building files have been written, and it gives us the directory. So if we go to that directory where it's CO3DE build Windows 2019 bin profile, you can see here that we're, we're, we're almost there. So we have the files essentially there. And again, according to this, it's like build files have been written to this location. Now we need to essentially create um, you know, the asset processor, all those other things. And that's what this next land, uh, line in the command does here is it's going to look for that folder and we're going to target the creation of the editor and this is what's you know like our asset processor and so forth and then this speeds up the the essentially the build time so let's copy this line and let's go back to essentially our o3d folder and pop open a command line here i'm going to just paste that in there and remember we we're really just going along with what's already there right we have a build folder inside of here and inside that build folder, we have the Windows Visual Studio 2019. You can see that here. So I'm going to go ahead and press Enter and run this. And similar to before, it's um, it's going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause it. I mean, it, if you have a very powerful system with really fast internet like I do, this whole process goes through relatively quickly. But if you have a little bit of a slower machine, um, this could take quite a while. All right, so let me go ahead and pause this. And once we're done, we'll jump back in and we'll take a look at what happened when the files were built. So you can see here that it's pointing us to that build folder with the Windows VS 2019. And you can see here it says now there's an editor.exe file located within there. So let's go to our C O3DE, which we are here, build Windows um, Visual Studio 2019. And then let's go to bin profile. And now you can see, in comparison to what was there before, we have a lot more files. We have an editor, we have an asset processor. Now, one way to check whether or not this was successful is to run this. But there's one more step we need to do before we run this, and that is to register our engine. Now, if we go to our um, C users folder, um, so you go to C users, and then your name here, you'll see that it's missing something called a .o3de file. And this is what's going to store a manifest.json file which will store um, essentially what this file does when we register our engine is you can have multiple engines and multiple projects and so it, show, it sort of connects or directs all of those projects together 
So let's jump back to the website and grab the line uh, that we need to use to register our engine. So you can see here after we ran this line, the very next step is register the engine. So I'm going along this source workflow. Um, forgive me, I should have specified that before, but they want us to go to the O3D folder and then run this. So let's go ahead and jump back into our C drive and open that up. So here we are back in our C drive. They want us to open a command line prompt inside of here and then run this line. So notice I'm just pasting it in here. Now, if this doesn't run, we might have to direct to our go directly to the scripts folder, but let's see if this runs. And sometimes when you're um, doing it in PowerShell, you might have to alter this command a little bit. Um, but for now, just follow along using um, this standard command line instead of PowerShell. So you can see I pressed enter. Now, if we go back into that users folder, you'll notice that there's a brand new folder in here called .o3de, which is here. And within this, you can see there's an o3de.manifest file. So I'm going to run this. It's going to open in Visual Studio. It might open in Visual Studio code for you. And what you'll notice is now we actually have a direction to our engine. Here's our engine. Here's our engine path. So you might be wondering, well, that's really cool. So how do I actually make a project so I can start making games and having fun or simulations or VR? Let's go back into this folder for a second. So I'm going to my C drive. You can see we have the O3D folder, the O3D packages. What I like to do is right click and just create a new folder called O3D projects. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to navigate all the way to the bin profile folder where we have all of these other elements that, you know, sort of that essentially make up the game engine and the things that we're doing. And we're going to open this O3DE uh, file here. And what this does, and this is a great way of checking if all of the previous steps were correct, is it opens up the project manager. And what this project manager essentially is for is creating projects. So I'm going to go ahead and go to new project, create new project. Now, one thing though, actually, before we do that, I need to take a step back is we need to edit our engine settings. Notice it defaults to that users.o3de folder. We don't want to do that. We actually want to go to our C drive and navigate, because notice this is for our third-party software, to that third-party software folder that we had created, which was uh, o3de packages. So that's this one here. So I'm going to select that folder. These two you can leave alone. And then this is the projects folder. And this is why I created that um, the um, projects folder that we were looking at earlier where it's like O3D projects. And actually just for the sake of uniformity, I'm going to name it dash projects so that it looks a little bit like my packages. And I'm going to select that folder. And this is where it's going to create all of my project files. Let's go to projects here. Let's go to new project, create new project. Now it's going to give you these two project template ideas. And you can see here, this one is very skimmed down. And then this one gives you a host of gems. What I'd like you to do, because I'd like to teach a little bit of Python inside these tutorials, is go to configure with more gems. Now, gems are essentially prepackaged models or code or whatever. And up here, I'm just going to type in Python. And I'm going to add these three elements here. And then I'm going to hit Create Project. Now, it's going to prompt us to do a build. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, my project is called New Project. Inside the Engine folder, you could have named it something else. Um, actually, but when we went to create new project, we could have named it something else here. Now it's giving me an error saying that, but I'm totally cool with it being named new project. Now, I don't want to hit open editor because we haven't built it yet. So down here, you're going to click on this and you're going to click on build. And I am totally ready to build. So I'm going to let this, again, I'm going to pause and I'm going to let this build out. You can see it's going pretty quickly, actually. Um, but I'm not going to let you sit. I'm not going to force you to sit and wait for this to go all the way through. So uh, when I come back, we'll take a look at opening our project. Once your project nears um, completion in respect to you know like it's being built, you'll notice back in our O3D underscore manifest file that your new project will be added under this project section. All right, so here we are back in our O3D project manager. And if we just click on open editor here, what you'll notice is the first thing it does is it starts to connect to the asset processor. Here you can see it tells you like which process if you click on it here or you can open up your asset processor down here you can see that it tells you all the files that essentially processed and then the current status you can see we're idle um, and then you can create a new level and what i'll do in future videos is we'll go through the process of creating a new level and all that good stuff